Anyone want to share? I, I have time maybe for one or two of you to share any ahas or takeaways from that? I think for me, it gave me a real boost to get out there on social media and to create video and just put myself out there. Um, That's great. Monday morning, as soon as I finished the call, I started doing, I started recording videos. So thank you. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Good. Yeah. Good, good. Thanks. Anyone else have feedback from last week's uh, recording? I would say <clears throat> I'm actually, I'm more on target to where I want to be than I, act, than I give myself credit for. Yeah. Oh, and that's I went through awesome. Those questions, and I went through yeah. them three times during the week just because I questioned myself, and I said, "No, yeah, no, I'm, I'm there. I'm doing what I should be doing." That's fabulous. Good for yeah. you. Congrats. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Well, I'll ask for ahas, you know, throughout our process because it helps to process it for yourself and also for other people, and. Um, and certainly it does give me a little validation to know that information I'm sharing is, is helping someone. So <laughs> I appreciate that too. Right. And uh, if you're joining us for the first time for uh, Monday Morning Mojo, I, I was just inspired to reach out to people in a bigger way. As you know, I'm a coach and uh, my passion is to help people really live a big life and to look at things from a different perspective so they can achieve bigger goals and and do so I think faster and easier than if they were to do it alone and so I think with everything happening in the last several months with COVID um, you know and having conversations with people I work with and some clients you know it really it made me realize that there's a lot of opportunity right now and i wanted to create a conversation around it i wanted to change the narrative around monday mornings too uh <laughs> that it, it can be um a very positive uh exciting way to start your week and not look at it with dread and the goal for that is to really have uh, i think a life full of the things that you want to do right so if you're excited to get to your career, vocation, you know, goals, whatever it is that you have in front of you, then Monday mornings are exciting because it gives you an opportunity to get to it. So I'm looking to help some of you with that as well. So I really appreciate you joining me. So I'm not talking to myself and, <laughs> and I'm, I'm glad that we could start a week together. So um, we're going to talk a little bit today. Hey, our, our theme for the week is going to be I'm just going to mute some of you and feel free to come off mute anytime uh, you'd like. And uh, if you have anything to say, you can either raise your hand through your controls on Zoom or just come off mute or use the chat. I'll try to pay attention to all of that. Um, so this morning, I wanted to really talk a, a little bit more about your purpose. And I know I put some stuff out on Facebook um, and asked, you know, what you might like to talk about this week. And it was... Um, pretty overwhelming to see that people were interested in talking about finding their purpose. And um, I'm happy to jump into that. So I'm going to share my screen. I've put some work into this and we'll continue to put some work into this for you every week. And um, I just ask you do the same because if you put work into this, then uh, you will find the results will be much greater. So now I just have to get to, here we go. Can you all see the screen? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yes. yes. Uh, all right. So I'm also going to encourage you to take some notes because you may want to do a little work on this throughout the week. Um, my intention is to make this somewhat light and fun too. But again, I am a coach. And so you're getting some free coaching and I want to give you some activities to, that you can work on because coaching only works if you, if you do the work. So I will give you a couple of activities. It's your choice if you want to implement them or not, but it will make the conversation really show up in your life, which I think is the purpose for m most of you being on this call anyway. Um, so this is a great quote by Mark Twain. It's so true, right? The two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. <laughs> and so I think, I know that we are all here for a reason. So I just want you to chew on that for a minute, mm -hmm. that you were created with divine intention and you're here for a reason. So 
So what might that be? And I'm excited to lead you through this conversation because figuring out your purpose is really the key to living a big, audacious life. And that can just be so extraordinary when you really walk more into your purpose. So I think that finding your purpose um, can be challenging and it can be very simple. It's really up to you. And so I'm hoping to give you some tools today that will make it simple. Uh, and many of you might think that you've already um, started working in your purpose. And that would be great. And even if you are on that journey, there's still an opportunity to, to take that much deeper. So the quicker we can identify uh, what our purpose might be, the quicker we can get to actually doing the work around it. So that's why I wanted to have this conversation with you today. So the first question I'm gonna ask you, you might wanna write this down, is how do I know if something is really my purpose or my true purpose, right? Because there's a lot of things that we do that we enjoy. And there's a lot of things that we do that we might even find some passion around. Yet, is it truly our calling? Is it really our purpose? Is it possible that you can have a passion for tennis, but being a tennis pro is not your purpose, right? Mm -hmm. So how do we know if it is truly our calling? I think the first thing I will tell you is to trust yourself. So if you're taking notes, write that down. I have to trust myself that I'll know because you'll have a very physical and emotional reaction to whenever you're in that activity or whenever you're spending time in, in that um, direction of life, right? So I think you have to trust your feelings, trust your intuition. Because when you're doing something that is truly your, your purpose or your calling, you feel a, a, just an amazing amount of joy. And you feel a, an amazing amount of motivation to continue to explore it. You feel a drive to want to give it away sometimes even, right? Mm -hmm. So, and that can, that can take a lot of different shapes and forms. I don't want you to think you have to be Mother Teresa or Oprah. You know, it, it could just be, you know, something very small, but you, you feel you want to contribute to the world because of it, right? So here's the thing. We are the masters of our own life. Now, spiritually, I do believe I co-create with my creator. That's my belief. I have, and I, my creator is God. That's what I call it, right? So you can think about that for yourself. Yet, I do believe I co-create. And I do believe I was given the opportunity to really be able to steer my own ship as well. So if you know that you are the master of your own life, then there should be a little voice speaking to you. Guy, I'm going to ask you guys if you don't mind. If you're not on mute, could you go on mute? There's a little background noise, so that would just help a little. Thank you. And then if you have a comment, come on off. Um, so you, as the master of your own fate, you have this little voice that speaks to you. And you all know it because you hear it. And it tries to tell you where to go. It tries to tell you the things that you like. And it tries to tell you the things that, yeah, don't, don't really serve you. So I think there's an opportunity to listen to that little voice because you can create your own reality. Write that down, you can create your own reality. So if you feel that you're not on the right path at any time, you can change it. You have the ability, you have the control to change paths anytime. You can make a left turn or a right turn. And so by listening to that intuition, that little voice, you can make those decisions. So here's, here's what's so exciting. If you have the power to change it, you also have the power to create it. So this is your opportunity right now to discover more of what your passion, where your passion lies. And what, where your passion lies is where you'll find your purpose. So where your passion lies is where you'll find your purpose. So we have lots of choices. Uh, this is also an opportunity for you to examine, you know, what are some new opportunities that lie in front of you, right? Because if we have the power to change it, then we have the power to really create whatever we want in our life. 
So first we make a choice and then the choice really makes us. So it starts with acknowledgement and awareness, right? So before we can get to better, we have to get to different. So in order to discover and align yourself with your true purpose, we have to discover more of what drives us. You have to discover more of what drives us. Um, so doing things that bring you joy, as I mentioned before, and, and maybe this is an opportunity to take a little self-assessment and ask yourself, do I spend my time doing enough of the things that really ignite my passion? Do I feel excited and motivated? Do I feel driven? Do I feel like um, this is something that I want to do more of? Um, do I feel like I'm working in my strength zone? That's something else to examine. What are your strengths? That would be another key to finding more about your purpose and your passions, right? Because when you work in your strength zone, amazing things happen because it's something that you're really good at. So you can excel, you can find creativity, you can find motivation, you can be um, really excited to want to develop more of that skill or art or whatever you know it is that, that we're talking about. So working in your strength zone is also super important. So you may want to take a little time today to journal on that and just ask, you know, ask yourself, what am I really, really good at? Like something that I can do without a lot of effort, something that, you know, I get really excited about, interested in learning more about, put your attention there. Um, because remember, where you put your attention will grow. So as a coach, I coach to people's strengths and help them accelerate in that and sharpen the tools that they have so that their strengths become greater rather than helping someone really overcome their weaknesses. I think that it's an opportunity um, for you to look at where your strength zone is. I could not have this conversation with you about finding your purpose without talking a little bit about your imagination. And it saddens me that as adults, we don't talk about this nearly enough. So think back to when you were a child. What were the things that you dreamt about? What were the things that filled your thoughts? Even the wild things like, I don't know, being the president or being an astronaut or, or whatever it might be. So perhaps your purpose wasn't to become an astronaut, but is there something around that environment that is really calling to you? Is it something in the sciences? Is it something about discovery? Is it something about space, right? So we have to really connect more with our imagination. Um, I don't know who said this, but this is such a great quote. Write this down. Uh, you get what you deserve. You get what you deserve in your imagination. So we'll talk a lot about mindset over our time together on these Monday morning calls. Um, so your imagination is your opportunity to explore more of your passion. And it's an opportunity to stretch your thinking. So it, it's really a, a question around who are you meant to be in your imagination? Where do you see yourself? What do you see yourself doing? If, if there were no barriers in front of you, what would you be doing? Could you create that in your mind right now? And know that you have so much support. You have unlimited support available to you in the universe to achieve your goals. And your goals might start in your imagination. So this is your opportunity to really create more of your outcomes. So what we build in our mind first can show up in our lives next. Um, it does take courage <laughs> to, to do this. I will say this is not, um, you know, this is not a light task. This takes a lot of thinking. This takes a lot of feeling. It takes examining, examining your life. Um, and it takes some courage to perhaps uh, realize that maybe there are some changes you want to make in your life. Um, without change, there is no growth. Without change, there is no growth. So this could be an opportunity for you to 
move forward in a big way. It could be an opportunity for you to even just take a small step, which could make a big difference. Um, so when you really start to answer some of the questions I've put in front of you already this morning, and you really examine what is deep in your heart, are you on the right path or not? If you're not on the right path, that's okay, because you can choose to do the work to get on the right path. It's never too late to do that. Um, it's just having the courage to do it. And remember, you know, everything about us is energy. Our thoughts have energy. There's energy all around us. So I think that it's important for us to examine what is the energy we might bring into this conversation too, right? So the, the, the opportunity is to look at this in a very positive, optimistic way. There's no blame. There's no, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm years old and I haven't done what I said I was going to do, or I can't believe, you know, I'm thinking that this is not where I should be right now. Please, none of that. It's just an opportunity to shift and make a different, uh, just to, to, to shift course. And it's never too late to do that. And I could name countless people in our history who have found success uh, later in life and uh, who are much older than any of us. And if they hadn't done that, we would have missed out on something, right? So, so your opportunity is never, it's just never too late. So I'm gonna give you a couple of ways to, a couple questions to work through and a couple of ways to examine whether or not you're living your purpose. Uh, one last thing I just wanna talk about to prepare you for the work is this conversation around your comfort zone. Uh, because in order for you to really pursue this, this goal of finding your purpose, you have to be willing to step out of your comfort zone. And you, you have to also acknowledge that according to this graphic, uh, what I believe to be true is that it's not just jumping out of your comfort zone into your you know, perfect life or, or growth zone as you see here. There's a few other levels to get there. So once you step out of your comfort zone where you really feel safe and in control, it's gonna be a little bit scary. So we do know that there's a, a fear zone around that. Around that. So you may uh, you know, temporarily feel a lack of self-confidence. You might be affected by other people's opinions. You may find excuses as to why this isn't a good idea. So I can share, if I can share a personal example, um, 10 years ago when I, made a decision to really answer this calling I felt I had on my life to be a coach and a speaker. I was working as a marketing manager for a company. I'd been there for eight years. And so I was doing well and they, I was in a comfort zone. And I stepped out and decided to start to build this business as a coach. And, and boy, the fear zone you know, showed up fast because I, I started to second guess my decisions. There were some people around me who were like, you're gonna do what? People pay you for that? you know, all kinds of stuff, right? My family didn't understand it. Uh, and I just had to push through that so I could get into the learning zone because that's where I was able to deal with the challenges and the problems head on. I was able to develop my skill set more as a coach. I was able to extend that comfort zone. Um, and then you have to move into the growth zone, which is where I believe I still am, which I don't think I'll ever leave, right? Because we're always growing. Uh, but this is where I found my purpose. This is where I was able to set new goals. This is where I was able to really grow and develop my purpose, which is to inspire other people simply. Uh, but I feel like my purpose is also to be a, a teacher. And when I was a small child, in my imagination, that's what I saw myself being a teacher and myself being some, some sort of a performer. So um, I don't know. I guess that's what I found to be you know, true today with technology, I'm, I'm not acting for you. I, this is genuine, but I get to, you know, have a little bit of a stage and reach out to more people. So I've just kind of adopted that as, you know, I must have had that, that ability in my imagination. What was yours? What was in your imagination? Does it have some relevance to where you can go today? So this comfort zone is important for us to understand because we do tend to feel safe in here. It does serve us somehow, it keeps us back. Uh, and your comfort zone is, is trying to create an environment where you believe you're protected. But in doing so, you're shutting yourself off from opportunity. So in, in really doing the work on finding your purpose, 
this slide is really important. You're going to have to really get to get comfortable with being uncomfortable, pretty much. So, another thing we are uh, talking about is moving through that fear zone. So, just realize I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Just understand that you are going to have some some you know possible feelings of uncertainty. You may. Um, have some fears around pursuing whatever it is is your purpose or dream um, and we have to make sure that we're not telling ourselves some story right because fear is false evidence appearing real people false evidence appearing real so in taking action towards your goals and towards your purpose just understand this is going to show up it's normal it is very normal for you to feel fear. What is not advisable is to stay there, right? So we have to move through it and we have to figure out how we can overcome that and build our self-confidence around it. This, this particular topic, I think we're gonna spend some time on one morning, um, just because everyone experiences it at one point or another. And uh, I think that, you know, some, for some of you, you might need a little support on that, whether it be a coach or a peer partner. Um, but I did just want to mention that this is going to show up. All right, so we know our finding our purpose is like finding that compass. And here's what I wanted to get into. I'm going to share this slide on um, the Facebook group in just a little bit. Um, and this is a Japanese example uh, that I really like a lot. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, like a lot. I found this a while ago. And uh, it is, it's called Ikigai. And it is a diagram that shows the intersection between four main areas of our lives. What we love, what we're good at, what we could get paid for, and what the world needs. So think about that for a minute. Would that not be living your purpose and finding some passion, right? So what do you love to do? Your passion and your mission are a part of that, as you see here on the slide. What are you good at? That may show up in your profession and vocation and, and how you could get paid for that. And what does the world need? So loosely translated, this word ikigai means a reason to live. So your purpose is your reason to live, right? And I think when you answer these four questions, what do you love? What are you good at? What could you get paid for and what the world needs? It's a great first step in discovering your purpose. Now, the other thing I want to mention before um, I, I turn it over for some ahas from you, because I see our time is almost up, is that, <clears throat> excuse me, this is not going to happen overnight. <clears throat> for some of you, it may be sort of quick. You might figure this out in a few days or a few weeks. Others, this could take a little time. I just want you to embrace the process and don't have any attachment to the outcome. Excuse me. In other words, just, just release the brakes. Allow your thoughts to come to the surface. Allow your feelings to come to the surface. Allow yourself to really examine these questions. And don't assume that by Tuesday morning, you're going to have it all figured out. You know, the, these are just opportunities for you. Once you discover or start to get a feeling for where your purpose and passion might lie, you still have to do the work of figuring out what that means, right? So that, that again, may take some time. And I will say, if I can help in any way, don't hesitate to reach out. I mean, I'm, I am doing this, you know, to support you. So if I can help you, let me know. So those are the four questions if you didn't write them down. They'll be on the Facebook group this morning. And the last thing I want to talk about before I hear from you all uh, is values. So I put a lot into this this morning. I, you know, this could be like a three-hour workshop, honestly. Um, but I tried to pack a lot of content in here because all of these factors are so important in really doing the work. Um, and so the, the last thing I wanted to mention to you this morning is values. So values are the, are the rules you live by. Values are the rules you live by. 
they're shaped by your beliefs, right? So therefore, it, it just goes to say that if you change the way you think and your beliefs change over time, you could have a different um, attachment to values. You could prioritize your values differently. So whatever you identify today as your core values could change, and that's okay. All right, that's fine. Yet it's important for us um, in terms of personal development, in terms of you know really expanding our thinking on our vocation and our purpose to know what our core values are. As a coach, when someone starts working with me, this is one of the first things I actually do is, is help them identify their core values um, because it gives me a really good understanding of who they are and, and what is important to them and how they think because your core values are so central to who you are. So I am gonna put on the Facebook group a worksheet that will help you identify your core values. It's the same worksheet, it's two parts that I give out to clients when they start working with me. Um, and so again, it's up to you if you wanna do the work on that. <clears throat> I think it's really um, enlightening to do it, to figure it out for ourselves. And I think when you do, you will understand so much more about why you do what you do, uh, because it really shows up. It, it's really kind of clear when you figure out your core values. Okay, so here's where we're gonna wrap this up. So if you would like to really take this conversation to a higher level and do some work, here are your action steps for the week. The first one is um, kind of a challenge. I'm just gonna give you, I'm gonna challenge you to find one way that you can step out of your comfort zone this week. Find one way you can step out of your comfort zone this week, just to start stretching that and thinking in a different way. The second thing uh, that you might wanna work on is just examine a little bit around fear um, and what could be holding you back, if anything. Just be aware of that, especially when you do the next assignment the next two things, which is the values exercise I'm gonna send you and answering those four questions to determine your Ikigai. Um, because when you do that work, some fear and some doubt may come up and I just want you to just be aware of it. Just, and a lot of it is, you know, just journaling. If you're keeping a notebook on, you know, the Monday morning mojo calls, you know, that, that will help. Okay. All right, so let's find out um, how we, we did this morning with all of this content. I know it was a lot. I'm just curious. And if anyone needs to jump off the call, it is 8.01. I have no problem with that. But if um, you want to stay on, I know last week we had a little chat after. Um, so any thoughts or ahas, takeaways? Was this helpful for you? Who wants to give me some feedback and the rest of the group? Just come off mute. Okay, Andrea. Oh. oh, Michelle, go ahead, and then Andrea. Hi, Anna. Hi, honey. How are you? <laughs> Chris, From... Good. How are you? Congratulations you? on grandma Thank status. You, Thank you. Um. So no, this was great. Um. I think that I don't. I'm not struggling so much as as to discover my purpose because I think I'm kind of there already. But good. I think where I am is just kind of figuring out what are the next steps because I think that we're you know, where I've been is where I needed to be to get to me, you know, to get to a place where I can expand, yeah. um, you know, more of the things that I can do. So this was very helpful. I, I didn't know you had topics that you would discuss every week. So it, it just kind of fell in line. I felt like as tired as I was this morning, I was like, I'm going to get up. I'm going to go and listen to Anna and just see what she has to say. So I think, I think this was helpful just to kind of challenge some of those questions and really start to see where you know i need to expand some of my horizons and my fabulous you know what i'm doing so thank you That's, oh you're welcome i'm so glad you joined us this morning fabulous. Yeah. yeah thank you for having me of course andrea what are your thoughts i wanted to piggyback on what michelle had said about um I really like the quote that you get what you deserve in your imagination yeah. and going back and thinking about where it is that I've been and how, how far I've come. It was that I needed to be where I was for the length of time that I was in order to be so passionate about helping others to kind of pull out of that same space. 
So I really appreciate that. Thank you. That's awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Yes. Anyone else have some feedback or ahas? I'll Stephanie. share. Oh. Sure. Oh, uh, Karen. Oh, let's hear from Stephanie first, then Karen. Um, I would say that I have a lot of work to do around fear. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, maybe not as much as I think I do, but I'll be interested to see what you're sending because I felt this way that I know what I want to do and, and, you know, not as an excuse, but as a single woman who's running a household, my mom lives with me and I'm her caretaker. It's mm -hmm. very, there's a lot of fear around stepping out of that comfort zone. Although right now, given the circumstances, I'm, I'm laid off. I also am sitting there saying, all right, God, I know that this is like, you're setting me up for my next step, but I still, when you said putting the brakes, that's exactly what I do. I stop. I'm like, I won't let myself go that far. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no. And um, so you, if I can say, Stephanie, thank you for sharing it. You have to probably learn to trust yourself a little bit more, Yeah. you know, and if I can help, uh, let me know, reach out. And um, even if you start to pump the brakes a little bit, you know, <laughs> ease into that too, and then release the brakes, you know, it's, it's, it's about making some progress. Remember not perfection. Right. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Karen, what were you going to say? So it's so funny that Stephanie just went because that's exactly what I'm dealing with is the fear aspect. You were uh, not alone. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's just, it's, it's difficult. I, I mean, I left my home state a year ago and I moved 1800 miles away and mm -hmm. I'm starting over in a brand new profession that I've never done before. And I, there's a lot of self doubt where I was so I'm, I'm going to be 50 this year. I was so comfortable in what I was doing in New York and I was, I was good at it and I've had confidence in what I did. And now I'm here in the state of Florida, which is absolutely beautiful and lovely and just delightful. But with a new job, it's like, I'm, I don't have the confidence anymore because it's new. So it may be new. What I feel I want to say to you, Karen, is um, you have transferable skills. You have um, not only experience and skills that can transfer into this new direction that you're moving into, you also have gifts. We all have gifts that we need to identify and use. And, um, and that's being in your strength zone. So I, you know, I'm going to encourage you to do a little um, thinking and writing on these questions and maybe even play the recording back. All, all of us have fear. I do too sometimes, you know, and the, like I said earlier, it's about moving past it. And the only way to move past it, you can't just think your way through it. You have to action. You have to, you have to take action. Right. Right. Because thinking is, is one thing, but we have to do something. So um, yeah, so I appreciate you sharing that. I would just say to examine some of the um, transferable skills that you have. Thank you. Anyone else have anything they want to either ask or share as feedback? This is great because when you share, you inspire each other. And that's part of what I wanted to create here was a community. So I love that you're sharing. I think for me, this is perfect timing. I've been kind of like, I too moved from New York down to North Carolina and I'm here almost four years in August and I'm nowhere near where I want to be. And a lot of that is my fear zone is so huge. It's almost paralyzing. So when I saw that you were doing this whole motivational thing and I love you and I, I was always inspired whenever you had sessions and stuff in New York and I kind of missed it. Because that was like, it was always food for thought. So thank you very much for doing this. You're welcome. It's my, on my part. <laughs> well, I'm sure you guys have figured out this is my purpose, right? So right. just doing this and, and, and contributing in some way is, is allowing me to live through, you know, my passion and purpose. So I, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to do that. Yeah. Time for one more. Anybody else? Okay. I well, just have a question. Can you share yeah. the imagination slide? I'm not sure if you were going to share that one because I was writing whatever you were, you had yeah. in there. Okay. 
Yeah, I can. You want me? I'll put it on the Facebook group. How's that? Yeah, thank you. Okay. You got and it. If I wanted to reach out to you, what would be the best time? Anytime. You can reach out to me anytime. You can send me. Um, I'm going to give you guys my cell phone number because sometimes I have people who will. Um, Hi, Gail. I'm glad you took a lot of notes. Sorry, I just got a, a little note in the chat. Um, sometimes people send me Facebook messages and I don't always see them right away. And now I have a few pages, so I don't know where <laughs> it's coming from. Uh, anyway, so my cell number is 845-649-2000. Feel free to, you know, text me or whatever. Happy to okay. chat. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Well, thank you for joining me this morning. I am going to post the recording in a little bit and I'll post uh, the action steps and some of the slides for you all to review. And uh, again, you know, do, do spend some time with yourself uh, really exploring some of these questions and your world changes when you ask the right questions. So that's, that's the intention. So have a wonderful day and we'll see each other again next Monday morning at 7.30. Thank you, Anna. Oh, you're welcome. Take care, everybody. You too.